I'm John o. Buchanan, and in this video, we're going to be looking at Logic Pro's smart controls. What I've done here is to load a sound using RetroSynth. We can open up its window right here, and we can see the instrument that I've chosen. It's a preset sound called Analog Plug. What I'm now going to do is to open up smart controls, which are up here in the top left-hand corner. And instantly, when I do that, I can see that I've got eight separate rotary dials, and these are controlling different parameters within RetroSynth. Why would that ever be useful? Okay, well, straight away, what I've got now is a really nice focused group of rotary dials to control the eight parameters that I'm most likely to want. Now, RetroSynth is a relatively straightforward synthesizer to get to know, but smart controls are available for every one of Logic's plugins, including the much more in-depth Alchemy and the ES2. So being able to say, okay, I want these eight controls and I want to be able to decide what they're actually going to control is really useful to have a scaled back set of controls um, to help you sound design in a more focused way. So straight away, what I can see when I open up smart controls, particularly if I keep uh, RetroSynth open, is that of course there's a correlation between the dials themselves and the parameters that they control. So for instance, if I grab the cutoff dial, I can turn that up or down and I can see the cutoff frequency moving in the filter section as a result of that movement as well. And of course I'm going to hear that difference too, as I move the dial we'll hear the sound get brighter as the filter opens up. Okay, that's great. But so far, what we've got is a group of parameters that are actually common to any sound that I might open within um, RetroSynth. In other words, these same eight parameters are going to be available regardless of which sound I load. And what that actually means is that some of them are slightly surplus to requirements. I'll show you what I mean. Here I've got a dial which is controlling the amp envelope decay. In other words, how quickly the sound dies away through its decay phase. Now, the only problem is that the amplifier envelope for this particular sound has a sustain level which is at maximum, which means that there is no decay. The sound speaks and it stays at maximum volume and then it drops away. So this dial isn't going to do anything at all. As I change it, nothing will actually happen to the sound. So what I'd really like to do is to change the assignment of this particular control so that it's doing something more useful, something that I might choose as a more interesting parameter. And in order to do that, we need to customize the smart controls to reflect our own choices. We can do that here. Up in the top left-hand corner, there's this inspector button. And when I press that, I can now map the controller that I want to use here. So the first thing I'm going to do is to go and find the parameter that I want to actually swap this out for. Instead of using the amp envelope decay, I'm going to click on this little down arrow here. And what I'm then in a position to do is to come to RetroSynth. I'm going to come to the filter and I'm going to change the cutoff by envelope. So when I choose that parameter, that's now happened. You can see that the name has been updated. If that doesn't happen, if the name doesn't update automatically, or if you're choosing parameters whose names don't update, I can actually just type in the name of the parameter that I want to here. But Logic's done that for me in this particular instance. And now what I've got control over is the envelope assignment into the filter, which I think will be a much more useful control to be able to hear and control directly from here. So that's affecting the filter envelope and fill, feeding into uh, the cutoff frequency itself. So that's the first thing we've done is to swap one function for another. But we can actually go further. We can change the way that these dials actually behave. Let's come back to the cutoff dial for a second here. What I can do is to open up the um, more advanced pane for this uh, particular parameter, and I can then decide how it's going to behave. You can see at the moment I've got this very linear introduction to the sound. In other words, it's a straight line between minimum and maximum. As I move up through this dial, the point moves in a completely linear fashion. And I can either turn this into something more akin to a breakpoint envelope by simply double clicking and creating the points of my choice to, behave, to change the way that the filter behaves. So in other words, as it travels up, I've got a small amount of filter change, then a much more significant steep ramp through this middle section, and then again, something smoother for the top section. Or I can impose a different shape um, altogether if I choose one of these, including actually even inverting the way that this behaves. So in other words, the sound's brightness and dullness is reversed in terms of the way that that behavior happens. So I'm in a position to do that if I want to as well. So that's a useful pain to be able to uh, actually control the individual behavior of each separate dial. But I can also go further with smart controls. So far, all we've done is to think about the way that um, individual parameters can be manipulated within RetroSynth. But I'm going to do two things now. Firstly, what I'm going to do is to insert Chroma Verb, Logic's Reverb, onto um, 
a, an insert within this track, and I'm going to just create um, a reverb which I think might be quite nice for this synth. I'm going to increase the decay time a little bit and just get a sound that I like. Okay, so that's behaving nicely. I like the way that this sound is working. But what I want to be able to do is to decide how wet this sound can get. In other words, I want to be in control of how much reverb I hear, and I want to be able to make that a progressive change. So again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap one of the parameters that exists within this group of sounds that I've got, um, or controls that I've got, and I'm going to swap it. I'm going to choose this sine level control. I'm not interested in having that available to me. What I want to do instead is to return to the various options that are available here. Here. And this time, instead of coming into RetroSynth and choosing a parameter from within RetroSynth itself, I'm going to come to Chromaverb and I'm going to choose the wet slider. This simply increases the amount of wet signal or reverberant signal that I can hear. And again, when I choose this parameter now, when I change this dial, what we're able to see is that um, the wet dial is increasing and decreasing accordingly. So I can go from a dry sound to a wet one. Now, what would be quite nice would be able to map this dial to a hardware controller that I might have available. You might have a keyboard with sliders and dials. Um, I've got a control surface here. So what I'm going to do next is to assign this particular parameter to something which I can control over hardware. I can do that over here on the left-hand side. Here is a learn button. This is a MIDI learn button, which means that when I press that option, Logic is now waiting to receive a MIDI input to assign to this particular controller. So if I choose one of my sliders here, instantly Logic has picked that up. and now now, as I move this dial up and down, I can actually control this wet signal from my hardware. That's nice. And I can also do it with auxiliary effects too. What I'm going to do here is to introduce uh, a new auxiliary bus. And onto here, I'm going to put tape delay. And what I'm going to do now is to um, assign another parameter. This time I'm going to choose stereo spread. Again, this isn't a parameter I want to use. I'm going to click on it. I'm going to drop down here. And this time within the main settings, I've got an opportunity here to grab the um, send level to auxiliary one. Now that is effectively making this dial control the send level here. As I introduce this, I've now got an opportunity with this hardware to now, uh, with this dial, to um, introduce the delay via this auxiliary. So now what I've got is delays that are being introduced via this dial. And of course, within the delay, I can then choose the delay time that I want, and I can configure that exactly to behave in the way that I want. And again, we could potentially put that on another one of my faders over here, so that I've now got sort of twin hardware control over reverb here and delay here. So what we've done within this video is to begin to see what we can do with smart controls. I've got an opportunity here to control key parameters within plugins from a set of dials that are in front of me. And at the moment, what I've done is to keep the ones that I liked from the automatic assignments that RetroSynth had made for me. But now I've customized a set of individual controls which control more than just RetroSynth. We've now got effects brought into our smart controls as well.